are now live. Hello, yeah. fellow Lakers. At, at this point, we will be talking to ourselves, just so you're aware. Unless anybody's dropping in before then. I what should we talk about? Know. How's your day been, Lego Simon? My day's been good. I've How's been... It? Oh, I mean, do you know what I should do? Hi. Um, I should hey, probably Bradford. get it up on here so we can get You should. Just because we get, and we also we might get some questions for, for Balvinder. Oh, my goodness. I know, right? For who? Who's that? For, for EastEnders legend, like, new character. But, I mean, talk about making a mark. It's and also, you know star you've made of... it when you made when you're on EastEnders, well, right? Well, 20 years she's been a professional actress for. So it's about time she landed a big role, like a big juicy role. Something to get your teeth into. But you know what? Let's talk about that later. We don't need to talk about that right now. Okay. But hello, everybody. Um, hello. Please tell waves. us if you can hear, can us. hear us. How's the sound quality? Do you want to come in a bit? It's, a, oh. it's very tight. It is very tight. How are you doing? It's been a few weeks. It has. It's been at least a fortnight, you know, since we last went live. Because we did a playbill, but we had some problems with the video, didn't we, for that? Yeah, we played it back and it was really juddery. So it was like... We would have put it up on... YouTube, YouTube, so you could have good quality. you could have watched it with us, but unfortunately, it was just really, really poor quality. Yeah. Hey, Aiden, we are good. I mean, how are you, fellow Lakers? Is more the point. Because you getting on with the do lockdown? Do you not want me to touch you? I'm, I was going to sit back and I'm I got to squash your arm. Um, um, how are you that's... getting on with lockdown, Legas? Yeah, I mean, how are you, like, coping really? Because this has gone on for even longer than I thought it would. And it was fun. I'm having my, I think I've mentioned this before, it's my sort of Gethsemane moments, you know, where it, it's not as fun as when it started. And I've struggled a bit. I've been a bit down at times with it. Because okay. I miss the theatre. I miss my friends. I miss meeting up. I miss hugs. I miss chatting and having a coffee. That sort of thing. I don't miss work all that much. Don't miss the muggle job. Gotta say. I'm doing okay, yes. I think. I'm, I'm still keeping busy with work. Um, what have you done, Lego Simon, that has helped you to kind of see the brighter side of a day? I'm trying to say, what's well, helped you to cheer the up? Spending time with the little Legos, really. The little, the little Legos, Legos are, a, are a great distraction. <laughs> and I could already see Glauco's mentioned little Lego Spencer's duet with Matt Lucas on yeah. baked potato, which has shown us up significantly because in... About 36 hours, he got over 11,000 views on Twitter. It's pretty impressive. Which is amazing. It's outperformed anything we've, we've ever on put Twitter. on Twitter. Nothing to do it's with It's almost outperformed anything we've ever created. I think there are a couple of videos that have just snuck over that on YouTube. You need to go into the potato industry. But yeah, spuds are the way. Um, John Cullen said, hello, hope you're yes. okay. Uh, his bat car battery was flat today. Nine days, no use. This is something I've just said to you. You need to yeah. go up to your car, my car and in just the... run the engine it doesn't for a sit few on minutes. The drive, right? it, it's a bit of a banger anyway. It's one of those cars that just... I, I see it more from practicality's sake than actually a luxury vehicle. And I only work about a 10 minute it's drive not away. It's practical. That's the wrong <laughs> word for it. It's barely functional. It is barely functional. Barely but operational. It, it probably won't come out of lockdown functional. with us. When we come out of lockdown, I don't think the car's going to follow. <laughs> it's going to be another victim of COVID. It, it is, it unfortunately. Is. The, nice way the bottom will drop out of that. I mean, the um, bottom dropped out of me a long time ago. Aidan Lowe says, I'm okay, sun is lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Sitting out just sitting outside. outside. Um, oh, we've been out in the garden a bit. Why aren't we doing we're this using, outside? We're Why using, are we always here? I say we're using the garden more because we've just not been out. Like, we've not been able to go As anywhere. As in, we've, we're using the garden more because we've been here. Because we're, we're, we're in. We're no. like, we've got a garden. And it has made How's us realise, I'm sure a lot of you are like this, when you're such outdoor dwellers, you know, like we're always at the theatre, we're always at work, you finally get your rent money and your mortgage money's worth. Like cashing in on that, aren't How you? How do you do with the money, Leggers? Because like we're finding that we're kind of saving a bit of money. Yeah. Not having not I, spending I money on tickets. It, yeah, if you're not spending money on tickets, surely you're creating Petrol. a bit of a stash, right? That being said though, there's a lot of people struggling at the moment because their industries they're working yes, in just aren't functioning. That's a very and the government true. aren't supporting. So we shouldn't probably brag about the fact that we are saving I'm doing some, fine, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks but, for you know, that. But, loads of but what we have been and what we will continue to do is Donate to charity. Talking of which, um, we down, downloaded and donated for the Lemis concert. Yes. I haven't seen it yet. Haven't watched it because they give you half seen of that it, money Legas? towards it. 
Also, Any good? have you um, seen the incredible Acting for Others t-shirts that they have done, they've created? The show must go the on. The show must go on ones, which are, cele which are um, supporting a couple of charities, including Acting for Others. I did try, have a I bit of fun trying to guess the show. Check those out. If you fancy picking yourself up some merch, which is going to really personify this time, you know, where theatres are closing, it's, I don't want to use the word unprecedented, but there you go. Um, get yourself... It, one of those active, those show must go on t-shirts because they're incredible. They are very cool. And we will continue to, any YouTube ad revenue we make, we will continue to donate to Acting for So Brilliant. So very shortly, we've yeah. got, in about five minutes' time, we're going to yes. have Balvinda join us. Lovely. Who was nominated. We nominated yeah, her. Yeah, she you was a Val nominee. She was Val nominee, currently in EastEnders. She is currently playing Suki Panasar in EastEnders. Um, she's got stage credits as long as your arm, and we'll talk about her stagey career leading up to... Um, her being a regular on EastEnders, like that's crazy. And I immediately, I mean, we'll talk. Do you know what? That's I'm not going to give too much away. Because it used to be for me, like, if you know you've made it when you're working at the National. But I think if you've got a stint in EastEnders, that's that's pretty like good. Like, if you're being. Because that opens the door to, like, celebrity um, celebrity stuff. Like, jungle, I'm a celebrity. Um, Balvin yeah. in the jungle. Um, dancing. Yes. It's not dancing Strictly. on the stars, is it? Strictly. Strictly. Yes. Um, John Collins is asking whether we have seen Netflix. Um, seen Netflix. We, we have seen Netflix. <laughs> whether we've <laughs> seen Hollywood on Netflix. Oh. It's got your favourite, Patty I Laponin. mean, it's got Patty Laponin. I did see someone who read it that it was the only way to make the gays appreciate a heterosexual sex scene because it was Patty <laughs> Lapone in it, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, I think we're three episodes in. We are. Or what do you think? I mean, I like the car. I, there's a lot I love about it. I mean, anyone that knows me knows that I adore Joe, Mon Joe Mantello and he's incredible in it. Jim Parsons is great in it. Like, the cars are exquisite. I found it at times a little bit predictable in the writing, but overall, I'm enjoying it. I'm really, it's great. It's brilliant. You're, I love the theme. You have I a love mixed, the topic. You have a mixed relationship with Ryan Murphy as a rule, anyway, don't you? Like, he's not, you're I not like a new I like anything fan of his. as long as it's good. good. And this is yes. good. It's talk, this is like woke. I think it's telling the story of, of, of just everything in terms of diversity and representation. Yeah. How certain minorities have been suppressed. Yeah. Um, there's Me Too in there as well. There's control. It's, it's just good. It's really sexualized as well. It's very erotic. It so is it quite ticks erotic. all of my boxes. Ugh. Um, but yes, it's there's lot. Do you know what? I'm overwhelmed with stuff Hollywood. that we could be watching. But yes, you're so recommending Hollywood. Comes with my Netflix. recommendation, Hollywood. Um, so catching up, Juanita says that um, they brought the Show Must Go On T-shirt just Juanita, yesterday. Absolutely, you should do that because they are um, amazing. And that I love all the nativity Christmas vlogs. That's oh, Isabella. You. Is that our ones or just in general? <laughs> are there nativity <laughs> Christmas vlogs out I there? I mean, hopefully nativity and will you're... be back this year. <laughs> hopefully we'll all be back in the theatre by Christmas. That'd be a lovely treat, wouldn't it? If your first, if your first show back was nativity. That's a feel-good feast, isn't it? Nativity is the best show. You need to catch it. I think it's one of it's the best. It's so good. One of the best I could watch that. Pieces. You know, I could watch that every year, I think. Yeah, the which, that's Legos one we've seen it. twice. Yeah. We saw it, then we took the little leggers. Someone's saying they love Pose on Netflix. You saw that, didn't you? I didn't watch Pose. Did you watch Pose? About the voguing? No, I didn't. Um, I don't think it was I on made Netflix. You. I think it was on BBC. And I think I watched the first episode and then you said, no, stop. You have to watch Paris is, Paris Burning. is Burning. I made him watch Paris is Burning before we got any further with Vogue because I think it's really important to have a bit of a, you know, a foundation of understanding when it comes to that time and space. Um, John Collins says, uh, yet to see the National Theatre Live Frankenstein which one should we watch? We've only How? seen it with Cumberbatch as the monster. Which I think is the one that's gone out. No, they've both gone out. You Have can they both. both gone yeah, out? Yeah, you can see it the oh, other okay. way. Okay, we only saw, yes, we saw Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch as the monster. Yeah. Maybe we should see it. I did enjoy it. We was should. it Danny Boyle? There was so much of the Directing. Olympics in it, wasn't there? There was. You watch it. Yeah, that it industrial like revolution industrial scene. Industrial scene, all of the, the lights as well, or the candle. Train. The lights? Light if bulbs. you know, you know. Guys. Yeah. If you know, you know. Absolutely, lots of Danny Boy. Yeah. I, I must think he's that shows a bit of a um, trial and error, a bit of an experiment for the Olympics. 
Um, I've been to see Nativity the Musical for my birthday and 30th October Best Musicals. Yeah, we love Nativity. Uh, this is one watching Code 404. Mm. What do you guys think of Nuffield South Southampton Theatres? They've gone into a ministry. Oh, I literally mm, just read this is that political. upstairs. Right. Um, which Bill I mean, us leggers in who do not know them. When any theatre fails, it's a tragedy. Like whenever any art is struggling or suffers because art is lifelike. The, the stories that can be told and it's so ancient as a storytelling medium and then when something comes along which is completely unpredictable and stops that creativity and that outlet, it's a tragedy. It really is a tragedy. Yes, it is a very sad loss. However, hmm. there is a little bit of um, hope for me because I think where a void is there, something will come along to fill it and if somewhere it needs the arts, like a phoenix, something will rise again, whether it will get new investment from It'll other people. It will be more powerful than ever. Or in a, get a new, refurb in yeah. a new guise. In a new, guys. Yeah, I, I don't know. So, That's so yeah, optimistic. absolutely, it's tragic, but I don't think places can go without the arts. No, not like, for Like, there long. isn't a world they've tried mm -hmm. in the past to get rid of it, and yet it's always been there in yeah. the undercurrents in somewhere. So, and it emerges, it comes up. And it will be so better than ever. Right. It's a central part of our story. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time, fellow leggers, to be Do joined by Balvinda? the amazing Balvinda Sopa. <gasps> turned up as well, so we can hear. Uh, um, so, I'm, I'm just waiting. It's going to work. Let's see if the technology is going to, like, not going to fail us. <gasps> Wow. Hey, wow. Hello. Hey. How are you doing? We're, well, how are you doing? We're okay. But I mean, <laughs> you've gone from what I imagine would have been a really grueling schedule <laughs> and yeah. this new job to nothing overnight. So yeah. how are you finding lockdown and how are you feeling? Um, okay, I'm having a better week this week. Last week was a little bit tragic. Um, I, I fell out of love with everything. Um, and I don't, and that was the first time actually that I was like, oh my God, I can't handle it. I need to get out. I need to do like, do something. Um, but yeah, I've just been, I've been okay. I think I'm not, <laughs> it's such mixed feelings, isn't there? You're not quite sure how you feel about it. <laughs> and you're um, right. It does change day to day as well, because yeah. you know, you, you, you busy yourself and you find things to do and then suddenly the reality of the situation can hit you so unexpectedly yeah. and I think it's fair just to have those emotions don't limit yourself don't make yourself feel you should think or feel a certain way yeah. just go yeah. with it I think you're right though you know yeah we are very social creatures I think um but sometimes that gets lost just in the melee of life and we don't realize we're being social we take us just when you go to work yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true. That's it. we're really social creatures because we because we're actors right so we meet so many different people on a daily basis in the rehearsal room on the studio floor like you know a, a, an audition like we're always communicating we're always in contact and it's and i miss all of that i miss conversation yeah. i miss sitting yeah. down and just like dissecting a character or a script or just getting up on my feet and playing with i miss play <laughs> yeah and that's the thing as an actor it's so experimental all the time and it, you know it can be bags of fun and trying things out and then suddenly that's taken away from you but thank you for finding the time to come and join us and at no and I mean, and we, we adore you. And when we found out that you'd got the part in EastEnders, literally couldn't have been more thrilled. So <laughs> let's talk about where we first saw you. you. You only came to our attention, really, in My Beautiful Laundrette, which we caught at the Leicester Curve, directed by Nikolai Foster. Talk to us about your experience in that show. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, that was quite hard, actually, because I had to play two very different uh, parts. And not just um, sort of male and female, but I also <laughs> I also had to play an, a National Front thug, so somebody that opposed everything that I am. <laughs> so that was quite interesting. Um, and to sort of use the P word um, and, and just sort of get myself um, in that frame of mind where you sort of... Because on the surface, I think it, it looks like that people that have that sort of mentality hate everyone that's brown or you know they're whatever um but i had 
No, it's going to sound really weird. But I had to find a way in. And my way in was to sort of go, well, there are lots of young people um, who don't have opportunities. There are lots of people like, you know, uh, BAME, I hate the word BAME, but lots of people, you know, that come from that background that aren't necessarily um, have sort of possibilities and opportunities available to them. And so you start to play the blame game and you go, oh, well, that person has got, you know, a better chance because they come from this, this and this area, or they've got this, um, you know, they come from a wonderful family or, you know, whatever. Um, and I thought I have to have something much more deeper than just the racism, because I think it's easy to hate someone based on the fact that they are white and black, but it's much deeper than that, you know. Um, and I Absolutely. And there was nothing that, for me, what really stood out in your performance and the reason that I wanted to nominate you for a Ballot Award was I, I could feel that difference as well. It, was, it wasn't caricature-ish and it wasn't superficial. There was something about your performance as Bill Chris and then as Moose, which completely transformed your persona. And it was so noticeable. I mean, that cast was incredible. There was so yeah. much talent on that stage. Yeah. But it really stood out for me, the depth that you clearly had gone to to bring that out in your character choices oh, so that was amazing you. really incredible I caught Kureshi. <laughs> oh really yeah yeah oh my god he hates me <laughs> <laughs> um oh no because i'll tell you i'll tell you the story um when we first because i didn't know that i was going to um I was going to be playing the part. I just thought I was going for a table read at, at first and we sort of sat down and I went yeah yeah it's a great story I said but what's the point of Bill Keith like why is she there and uh <laughs> and Nikolai Foster went yeah well I mean it wasn't that what I said was I think if you're going to get rid of any character get rid of the mum because she comes at the beginning and then at the end there's no point to her and Nikolai Foster bless him he was like thank you Belle uh, let's just do introductions first <laughs> 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 oh, my like, oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry it's because he, he probably knew what he was going to do and what he was going to get you to do in those parts right yeah i mean i think you know when you look at the script it's a brilliant script it's so deep there's so many layers to it but i needed something more and as an asian woman that comes from that background i was like i can't keep playing this submissive you know depressed sad woman that doesn't have any agency you know and I was like and so we asked him to put an extra scene in and I said look we can still talk about arranged marriages because that still happens in our culture we can still talk about honor um and you know and how we want our families to be perceived but we don't have to always be tied to the kitchen sink and we don't always have to be cleaning we can be doing other things so that's why he then added the um the mad Lizzie scene so oh. we, yeah so that's a scene that was added Okay, wow. Wow, very interesting. I'm very interested in the um, cultural element because um, we have these conversations often around representation. Um, representation in theatre is quite often very poor. And we've actually, um, when we've allocated stars to shows, there's shows where we've taken stars off because well, it's been considered it in our reviews so poorly represented. Poorly represented. Anyway, you could try and dumb it down, but it's, it's just in this day and age, there's it's, no excuse. it's unacceptable. Yeah. And I'm interested yeah. to know from your point of view how the industry has changed or what changes there have been. And it's going off piece to the well, you, from you've you been in the business for 20 years, so how has it changed? I mean, or how far do we have to, how how far have we come and how far do we have to go? I, that's what I'm interested in. Okay. I think we have, um, we have come quite far um, in that I see a lot of my peers um, up on stage or in TV programmes, um, Netflix series and things like that. And I go, brilliant. You know, we are actually moving towards a, a wider representation and our stages and our TV screens are diverse, but we're still not as diverse as we could be. Um, and I think, I also think when we talk about diversity and representation, I think sometimes they're buzzwords because diversity doesn't just mean colour. It means mm -hmm. accent. It means uh, thought. It means ideas. It means everything, you know. Um, it means class. Where I come from, you know, I, I'm a Gillingham born and raised, get well, I come from Chatham actually, uh, but we've lived in Gillingham all our lives. Nobody knows about Gillingham, you know, but that's something how many people come from here you know that we can that's diversity to me you know my street mm. is full of so many different people that come from so many different places around the world around the country 
And that is what a, our streets should look like. And I think EastEnders is getting there. You know, they, they, yeah, they absolutely. smashed it with their diversity. Um, and, you know, and but then I think there was also a time, actually, when I used to watch period drama. And I'd sit there and I'd be like, it's never going to happen. I will never see myself in a period drama. Then Call the Midwife came out. And that was, I can't remember what it was exactly, but, and I sat there and I, I'd come back, <laughs> it was a Sunday night, and I remember um, I'd gone to uh, Aqua Aerobics at the gym, I was living in Huddersfield at the time, Aqua Aerobics came back and it was Call the Midwife, no, it was uh, Planet Earth and then Call the Midwife, and I went, that's one period drama I could see myself on. Seven years later, I'm on it. And amazing. Like, amazing, right? Put that out so into the universe and made it happen. Yeah, yeah. So we're moving slowly towards the right direction. Um, but but still, there's a lot more. to. I think also we need to shape the stories up. I think narrative is very stale and boring. Um, we, you know, arranged marriages, forced marriages, abuse. Yes, we know it happens, but we're not defined by that. There's yes. so much more to us. There's so much more mm, to us. Absolutely. Um, um, so talk to us about your, can we go right back now? So be, going into 2001, what drew you to that? to the stage what drew you into the profession i think of all i speak this sounds a bit can i say wanky you can <laughs> you just did <laughs> yeah well, because, because well, we all think, understand I think, <laughs> I think if you're an actor you're an actor right it's in you from 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 day one and i think i always used to like performing and um i took my dad once to see a show and it, there was no show on, but I'd misheard it. And my dad was like, you're dragging me around the, like, the, the street. Don't know where we're going. What are you doing? And I'm like, oh, when is the show on, Dad? Come on. And they were like, you're mental. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> um, but I've always been interested in telling stories and, um, and community. My background is actually community theatre. Uh, so um, when I went, because I studied in Huddersfield, um, and in 2001, when I started acting I was actually working with a theatre company called Chol and I have everything to thank them for because they were they were telling stories about the community that we were working in at the time they were affiliated with Lawrence Batley Theatre so they were getting in people like me in the theatre um, young people old people we were telling stories about refugees we were telling human stories about you know struggle that everyone could relate to and I was like I need to be a part of this. I need to be telling these stories. Um, and so, yeah, so that's where it came from, really, I think. And then, yeah, and then I was like, I want to do theatre studies. And my dad was like, it's not going to get you anywhere. I was like, well, I'll do journalism with it. I'll do theatre and media. Maybe I could be a journalist. And then I remember my mum said to me, you lied to us. You were never going to go into journalism. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as well that you didn't. Like, because, you know, yeah. you would have robbed us of all of these fantastic roles that you've oh, played um, and you've been in you've you've had stints on all of the major soaps at least <laughs> you've done, I know. You've I know done you. yeah. then this was the last one to come along really yeah 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 also about that you know you were talking about the universe it's really funny because i used to say to myself i'll tell you another story as well um, yeah. about the universe later Okay. Whatever. Um, anyway, um, so I said to most people used to go to me, ah, oh, well, you know, you're an actor. Have you been on telly yet? You've been on telly yet? This was before any of the soaps came up. And I was like, well, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a theatre actor and I do radio. And they're like, all oh, right, right, all oh, right, then, yeah. And then that was be that would be as far as it went. And I was like, God, really? Do I have to be a TV actor to have made it? And in course, in my head, I had made it anyway, because, and I'm still, you know, making it is a process. It's not yes. that you've got there. EastEnders will finish tomorrow. I will still be an actor. Do you know what I mean? So, Absolutely. so I said, um, yeah, so I was like, oh, well, and every time somebody said to me, I said, well, look, the fact that it hasn't happened means that there's every possibility that it will happen. Yes. And it did happen. That's amazing. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. I had a similar thing with um, pantomimes. I, when I, I did a, a long stint at the Nottingham Playhouse pantomime where they exactly. just like jobbing actors really good. And I'd tell people that I was in pantomime and they'd be like, oh, who's in it? Who's the yeah. Isn't it? And I'm like, well, actually, it's, it's jobbing. It's jobbing. I'm going to call it work. It's to people. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh, all right. Exactly. Kind of you know random people, random people on the train. They'd see you writing. They'd be like, are you a writer? You're like, no, I'm an actor. All right, so what have you been in that I'd know you in? And I'm like, yeah. Can you just know I work. Just know that I work. I'm talented. Yeah. If you're constantly in work, then that's a win. You're doing something right. So, yeah. um, so let's talk about... Let's talk about Suki. Now, when that 
I mean, where do we start? But when that character... Are we talking about EastEnders? Yes. Yeah. It's okay. When that character, synopsis, or whatever, whatever it is they send you first, lands on your doorstep, um, can I call her a piece of work? What would you? What did you think about that when it when it's in front of you, that character, and what you knew she was going to be coming to the square with? Yeah. Um, well, firstly, I I wasn't too. Oh God, I wasn't too keen. There were two. Mm. There were a few reasons. One was because she's very much older than I am. Two, she's a mother. Uh, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with playing a mother, and I, but my eldest son is 30. In the show. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, okay. And then, because I spoke to my agent, I said, how old are the kids? And she went, well, the eldest is 30. I said, Una, look, I don't mind if the kids are like 15, 16, even 20, I could buy, but 30. And she was like, I know, I know, Bal. I said, well, I don't know what to do about this. And she was like, just do the best you can. Do the best you can with the hope that, you know, they're looking for a new Asian family. They might slot you in somewhere else as an auntie or a cousin or something. And I was like, yeah, all right, that's a good idea. I'll do that. But also we were on tour with, um, what was I on tour with? My Beautiful Laundrette. Yes. We were on tour with My Beautiful Laundrette. We were in Cheltenham. Uh, and it was a really, they they <laughs> sent me a, uh, Una calls me on a Thursday and I had to get it all done and dusted by Monday. So Friday we had a show, Saturday was two day, two day show, Sunday was travel day. And I was wow. like, when are we going to get a chance to do it? And mm. these were big meaty scenes, like meaty scenes. I had to break it down. And I was like, oh, I never got an idea. Anyway, um, and I didn't want it because yeah, she was a mother. She was, um, uh, and then also this cancer story. I was like, man, that's some, some Deep. low business there. Yeah, what's Hello. going on? Machiavellian. Um, Machiavellian. Right. And I was like, then, you, you know, what's <laughs> exactly? Yeah. But then I thought, well, you know, and I started speaking to people, not telling them what what was happening. And people were like, yeah, we know people that have done that. Yeah. yeah there are people that have done that. I, got, I received a text from somebody recently who'd watched the revealing and went, yep, yeah, this is this is real. And I was like, oh, my God, there are real people that, that, you know, that feel this way. And I think what it is, is for Suki family is everything and you will do absolutely anything murder a man if you have to to protect your family yeah now, she's got a slightly darker you know there's lots of things hopefully that will be revealed in the coming weeks. yeah because there's so many teams <laughs> about what you know we think this is dark enough but it's going somewhere else so yeah yeah well i hope so <laughs> um yeah and we yeah and we're in constant chat you know to with the with the the directors and the producers and you know just to kind of see where we're going with it and um yeah and i was i was a little bit concerned because i thought well this could ruffle a few people's feathers and, and really upset a lot of people and i was like i'm not sure i want to be on the brunt of that i'm not sure i want to be somebody that receives mm. such hatred and look the fans are brilliant when they don't like something they don't like something and you're like yeah. like i'm just doing a job and and i think it's important to show that there are dark people in the world we don't all live in a fluffy happy you know rosy world we can choose to ignore it but it's not you know it doesn't mean it doesn't wow. happen so you've got a nice meaty storyline at least and talking i guess about um playing an older parent isn't this something you say ian ian bills Mum. Yeah, I mean, Kathy doesn't look old enough, does she? But that's so. what they said to me, yeah. So Julia Cramsey was like, oh, Val, come on. It's only a matter of, you know, six, seven years. Or something There's like something that. in the water in Albert Square, I think, that keeps all the parents <laughs> youthful. Yeah. I'm interested to know then, in terms of rehearsal process, obviously coming from the theatre, you'll have a dedicated rehearsal time. How is um, rehearsal in the theatre different to rehearsal on Albert Square? How much do you get, if anything? Oh, or my, God. Oh, like? oh my God. <laughs> so scripts will come like about two weeks in advance, but also you're learning other scripts that you will have, you know, sort of been filming. Um, and then you go in and that's it. You get maybe three takes max. And you've that's got incredible so i mean it's a, it's a challenge you just go it's and a real do challenge. Your... and on my first day i hadn't i i literally didn't even know that the studio was behind me i was sat in the green room waiting to be taken somewhere and they were like so you're on now and i was like 
oh right where, where do I go like just behind you now I was like oh shit okay cool and then just as I walked in through the door I got a pink sheet and I was like what's this and they went amendments I went Change oh. oh god like I'm just about to film they were like yeah yeah it's cool I was like oh my god and it was only one line but you know what it's like when you've got to learn a whole new line <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness you know, and I think you have to go in really open. You've got to know the scene well enough to be able to um, be open and work with whatever the actor's given you. Because in the rehearsal room, you're able to play lots of different scenarios, aren't you? And you can work off what your actor's given you. You only get to work off what your actor's given you when you get on set. And that could be nothing like what you imagined it to be, so. I guess that's the thing as well, you're getting what, three or four takes and yet if you're doing a run, even once you know what you're doing, you're doing a run over weeks There's months. flexibility. Yeah. So you can still keep, you're doing the same you scene again and again and again. So yeah. it's, it's very different. But it's lovely as well because, I mean, there's, there's benefits or there's, there's beautiful things about both, the rehearsal process in, for, for a theatre show and for TV. I think sometimes we can overthink and overwork stuff in the rehearsal room. Um, or you come up with so many options and you're like, oh, God, I'm not sure which is, you know, oh, maybe I'll go with this. And then halfway through, you're like, no, I'm just going to, you know, side along with something else that I thought, you know, and you can always change and and keep your performance fresh. With TV, you still manage to do that, but it's just quick because you've got to be in the moment and whatever you give is often the right thing anyway, um, because it's written, you know, well enough yeah, to, to get it. There. And, and, but then trusting your instinct and lucky for you drawing on all that experience and imagine there's things that you've, you've bought from the stage that are that come out within your TV performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And mm. I am, um, and I think um, I'm not sure that I'm quite a hammy actor, so I don't often <laughs> really think. Right? I'm not sure. Sure. No, I'm a um, hammy actor. <laughs> Can you do that real? Like I'm not really. I, I often get told, like you know, that that I'm not I'm not very big sometimes. You know, I'm I'm not um, caricature, you gotcha. know, uh, which I think is great, and I think that stood me in good stead when I came to Suki Panasai. And I think this, I mean, God, we've only been on screen a few months. Like, there's so much more to explore. Like, this is just not even the tip of the iceberg. We haven't even got to the iceberg. Do you know what I mean? It's like there's so much going on, um, and I just I watch people like you know. Sharon Letitia Dean I watch um you know Phil Mitchell like Steve McFadden amazing amazing like the way they work on set you are in awe because these guys have been doing it for years and they just they hit it and you're like you're mesmerized so I want to reach that level <laughs> it's funny isn't it because I, I don't think of them as actors I don't you, when you say Steve McFadden I, I think no it's Phil it's Phil Mitchell yeah, so yeah, I thought of the character yeah absolutely I wouldn't imagine him being on like Strictly Come Dancing or anything <laughs> so I'd be like what's, what's Phil doing on Strictly Come Dancing <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah. Yeah. separate yeah. and that's just got a really good acting job and it's really good and yeah. when these people have been in your living rooms for almost 40 years you know it's it's so difficult to separate the two yeah. Can you imagine how I felt when I walked on? <laughs> like, I was like, "Oh my God, it's Phil Mitchell!" Yeah, <laughs> what, you know, walking into Albert Square for the first time physically. How does that feel? Yeah, I had to take a moment. I I was like, because they because I hadn't had a, I'd been shown around all the sort of admin side of the building, um, and the green room and some of the dressing rooms, but I hadn't been shown the set or the studio. And uh, so on the first couple of days we were in the studio and then later on in that week we were on the square and I just went I have to stop please can you just allow me this and I could hear Dirty Den and Angie and Sharon and um, the ghosts of the square oh my god it was just like it was so surreal but mm. so real at the same time like I just stood up looking at the Queen Vic going I've watched this I've seen this in my house for as long as I can remember and here I am standing outside it it was just yeah it was a pinch yourself moment and I think even if I had pinched myself <laughs> I wouldn't have I wouldn't have felt it it was just yeah amazing and I'm interested to know as well do you watch yourself have you seen any episodes do you watch it and do you are you able to enjoy it or are you on that critical actor's eye I think I know the answer, but what's your experience? 
So the first time I watched it, uh, it was really lovely, actually. We watched it with my family, and they did a pies and pea night. Yeah, gorgeous. That's brilliant. Fish and chips, pea and, pie, pea and pies, um, and uh, dessert. And we got it all done by 8 o'clock, because it was Monday night. Um, and we were at my sister's house. Uh, and her mother-in-law, father-in-law, her brother-in-law, they all came to watch it. Um, and the minute I came on, they were like, whoa! <laughs> That's brilliant. We need to rewind it because I couldn't hear what was going on. But, um, but I, I sweated like a mad woman um, because I was watching it for technical, for the technicality of it. Then I watched it. This, I know this is going to sound really like maybe overthinking it, but then I watched it a second time to actually watch the performance and how I was communicating. And then I watched it a third time just to watch it. Just switch, um, and, try to switch off and yeah, just, yeah. soak it in. Because I think I think it is important to watch yourself back, um, just to see what your face does. Yeah. You know? Because sometimes I think uh, there are things that happen that you're not in control of. And I think when I first was on set as well, like I was very aware of my face. And so you're doing really weird things, you know, your eyebrows or your, your lips trembling or you're looking like a little bit like dazed. Um, or, or like your face feels quite tight. Like I, I get tight face around here and I'm like, I know I'm not being the part, you know, and you just have to throw it off and just sort of allow yourself to be in the moment. So I watch out for all those kind of things. <laughs> Can you make us a promise now that you're, you'll return to the stage like at some point? Because uh, we would like, because I mean, we love theatre and I want to see you following on from Laundrette, I want to see you in the flesh, I want to breathe that air that you breathe, and I want to see you treading the boards again, and when yeah. people get sucked into TV, that I always fear, oh, we've lost them, we've lost no. them. No, no, you haven't lost me, you haven't, not at all. Theatre will always be my number one love, always, um, and I, because it's just, it is real, it's real, you see those people, that, and you feel the reality of it as well, and Every night is a different show. And for me, that will always be something that I will want to live for. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank. That was the right <laughs> answer. That was the answer I was hoping for. We've always known we're going to have a special relationship because was it your battle? Your battle. And although we're <laughs> love at the moment. We're love today. But, but we're battle when it's the I couldn't it. believe it. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, this is fate. Really? And then your mugs came out. I was like, can I have one of them? <laughs> <laughs> really it's totally well, as soon as you're back on the stage you know you're going to be eligible for even more um, nominations which i'm sure you're going to be getting because you are say, thank you so much for that nomination like yeah. it was really really kind of you to like because it was that was a hard job but i really really appreciate the fact that you took the the chance wow well, i tell you not they're, they're not easy to come they're by not. and <laughs> you earned it and you, you earned totally them. deserve it yeah so. you did um, and like, like I say, it's it, that was an incredible cast. It was such a creative piece as well. But for me, it just really stood out. There was something about the way you portrayed those. And being, I, I think, even though there, were, there was doubling up amongst the cast anyway, it just felt to me like your two parts were so worlds apart polar opposite um yeah. but the the ability to convey those extremes was just it was a live one for me and it really stood out so you earned it you absolutely Thank earned you. it i no. think it was the undercut i went and got an undercut <laughs> <Yes>. exactly. <laughs> it was that undercut was a bit sexy to be honest yeah. with you it's grown quite a bit now i mean look <laughs> We're all struggling. I've almost lost my perm. Look, it's all going oh, out, no. isn't it? It's another thing, like, what are we, we going to... We did grew grooming, right? I mean, look. Yeah, I put his hair the other day. It's not too bad. It wasn't too That's bad. Okay. Right, I took, oh, yeah. him, took him out in the garden, because needs must, right? Best and, times. Another thing, a lot of my greys are coming through now as well. Oh, oh. but that's quite nice, though. It's distinguished, isn't it? Thank it's you. Nice. Again, you're going to the right answer. It's the right answer. <laughs> Um, it's been a pleasure been... and a privilege oh and lovely to speak to you in person. Yeah, yeah, you too. Please, please, please let us let take you out for lunch when this is all over. Yes, like, please, we must do that. Yeah. Got to get together and finally have a hug. Um, it's, it's, it's just a joy to watch you doing what you do um, night after night in our lounges now, but we can't wait to see you back on the stage. Absolutely. Now. Keep on sharing your craft and your passion. Yes. It's just oh, great. God. And you as well. You guys are amazing. Oh, yeah. The way you 
the way you like lift people up, the way you talk about shows, you really do bring that sort of excitement and passion. Like you said, yeah, like, keep it coming. <laughs> keep going. Um, I think, yeah, I'm going to come to your house one day. We're going to see, you know, or you can come here, have a curry with mum and dad. Oh, my yes. God, yes. Oh, you, you can said come it, it's recorded, we've got witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to have to come and, that. come and meet our little legs at the moment. Because do you I know, know the, you've got little legs. Did you see on Twitter, our, our youngest, he sang the baked potato song, and, and he got over 11,000 views on Twitter. Oh, like, my God. He's starting to make it. He's showing us up. Is what he's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> uh, but we love you, we adore you. Go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. you. Right back at you guys. Thank you. Uh, stay safe. Stay safe. Bye bye. 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 <sighs> oh, should we this one? Oh, well, wasn't that nice? Do you know what I loved about that is finding out what goes like because I know we all have these questions about what goes on in Albert Square in when these we're big not. Soaps. Yeah, you know when we're not there, yeah, like you know when like when we're is, not there. When we're not because I feel like when I watch EastEnders, I feel like I'm in the square. Like I feel like I'm there. Um, when it's such a well-oiled machine. Yes, do you know it what is. I mean. And it's been going for so long. It's as if it is real. Yeah, you know what it I mean? is. So a, it's, it's nice to see the working. And it's like, wow, okay, there's a lot that goes into that. <laughs> there is. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that, Her Legacy. It's lovely to see somebody that's gone, that sort of has a theatre background, going into a soap and talking about the difference between those two crafts. And we often talk about theatre being, a, communi being a, a conversation between audience and performer. Yeah. But you don't get that on the screen. It stops at like Absolutely. a piece of glass, yeah. doesn't it? And you so can choose to switch it off or turn it over and it's gone. Yeah, and it's gone. Um, the theater, so that must be such a come with you. Do you know what? I thought that was really insightful. Really enjoyed that. Bal comes across as a very nice lady. Yes. She, do you know I'm still worried that we're going to have an interview at some point where whoever we're interviewing is just dry and miserable and <laughs> not nice. And we're just really lucky so far. I think we far. know how to pick him. So, also, I mean, she's... That must be another, she's so nice. There are a lot of actors I find that play to type, but clearly she's playing this evil witch on EastEnders, which is so incomplete. <laughs> evil witch, that's a, that's a label. Um, complete complete like opposition million. to who she actually is, which is a real demonstration of her ability, I think. Isn't that, Absolutely. That um, Jade Starx agrees around the Albert Square, says Albert Square is crazy. He, she, Jade. Yeah. Um, like Bal said, the first time walking into the square is the most surreal thing. I would Imagine love the opportunity thing. to go and walk around Albert Square. I just, I, I think it's true what Bal was saying. Like you can almost hear the voices and the ghosts of it. You would be walking into place and go, "Oh my God, this is where Tiffany Mitchell got run over." Oh my God, this is the Queen Vic. And then you'd think about Den and Angie. It's just so iconic. John Cullen, you can come again. Thanks. Well done, oh. you guys. <laughs> you are naturals. And it was nice to see how at ease Bowles was with you. It's just, just people, nice when Bowles are so nice. When, if people, when are people are nice, nice, take an interest. This is my tip. I always say this to people. Take mm. an interest in people. Yeah. Be more of an interest in other people than you do yourself. Yeah. And this is what I tell the little leggers as well when I talk about conversation. Yeah. I say anyway. And little Lego Lincoln has got that down to a down to a T. He now. asks us how our day it, was. Yeah. And how how we are. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he'll really delve. But it is important. <laughs> it really is important. So yeah. Um. I mean, like, oh, musical theatre fans been to the set as well. I'm so envious of you. Um. But yeah, I I just think it's really nice to know the background of these when you see somebody that you've seen on stage and then they're like the week you have been. When I found out Ballard got that role. I, I straight away to you, I was like, you'll never guess what. Like, she's, it's so incredible an achievement. Yeah. And I was thinking, thank God we get to see more of her. Absolutely. That's what I was thinking. I had a great birthday, thank you. Um, was it last week or the week before? Last week? You should know, it was your birthday. Maybe two weeks ago. Two yeah. weeks ago. Um, I had a great day. Thank you very much to you leggers who sent in video messages um, and all of your comments saying happy birthday. I, I really did have a great day. Even though I was under lockdown, I, I had a great time. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a bit what I'd originally planned. Well, we were meant to be in Berlin. No, we weren't. We were no, meant we weren't. to be. We were meant to be. Exactly where we were. Exactly where we were. 
because you know you just live life on the breeze breeze. Mm. Uh, but we were also meant to be going to Berlin yeah we were all and that didn't hasn't happened but I'm happy to be at home. There'll anyway, we've got to wrap this up. Yeah, there'll be another time. We haven't had any dinner yet, so we're going to go and have we're going to go and a eat. bang bowl tonight. Because this whiskey and Coke need some food to soak in. Yeah, we haven't lined our stomachs, so it's going straight to our heads. You know what we're um, We hope you're well. Yeah. We hope you've had an okay time. Mm. Hope you found that interesting. Yeah. We'll um, see who else we can get See who else we up. can get lined up. If you've any suggestions, let us know. Like, um, I'm... Oh, likely people we can get in touch with. <laughs> Not just anyone. Yeah. You know, if you've got a way in. But, you know, who knew that we'd be talking to Val? So, you know, anything is possible. Put it it out into the universe. Um, Yeah. But, yeah. We're going. Until next time. We're going to put this up on YouTube. Yes. The quality looks okay. Yes. So, um, keep an eye out on social to see when we're here next and who with and more's the point keep an eye on each other guys um check out check in with one another thank god we've got this we've got social media we're still here drop us a message if you need a chat um i I mean i might be asleep because i'm doing that a lot right now so and it's lovely to see you guys too yeah it's lovely to see thank you for joining us love our fellow lakers um bye bye watching report bye bye